Please rise. Let us put ourselves in the presence of the Lord. In the name of the Father, of the Son, of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Praise be God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all consolation. He comforts us in all our afflictions and thus enables us to comfort those who are in trouble with the same consolation we have received from him. Hear the words of Jesus. Come to me, all of you who are tired from carrying loads, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke and put it on you, and learn from me, because I am gentle and humble in spirit, and you will find rest. For the yoke I will give you is easy, and the load I will put on you is light. With faith in Jesus Christ, we reverently bring the body of our brother, Salvador Pibanco Salaver, Let us pray with confidence to God, who gives life to all things, that he will raise up this mortal body to the perfection and company of the saints. With faith and hope in eternal life, let us commend him to the loving mercy of our Father and assist him with our prayers. He became God's Son through baptism and was fed at the table of our Lord. May the Lord now welcome him to the table of God's children in heaven. With all the saints, may he inherit the promise of eternal life. Let us also pray for ourselves that we who mourn be reunited one day with our brother. Together, may we meet Christ Jesus, who is our life, shall appear in his glory. And now we will go to the invocation and the return is, Lord, save your people. By your coming as man, Lord, save your people. By your birth, Lord, save your people. By your baptism and fasting, Lord, save your people. By your sufferings and cross, Lord, save your people. By your death and burial, Lord, save your people. By your rising to new life, Lord, save your people. 
by your return in glory to the Father, Lord, save your people. By your gift of the Holy Spirit, Lord, save your people. By your coming again in glory, Lord, save your people. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Welcome our brother Salvador to paradise and help us to comfort each other with assurance of our faith until we meet with Christ to be with you and with our brother forever. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. The first reading is taken from Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters, he restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk to the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading is taken from the letter of Paul to the Romans. None of us lives as his own master, and none of us dies as his own master. While we live, we are responsible to the Lord, and when we die, we die as his servants. Both in life and in death, we are the Lord's. That is why Christ died and came to life again, that he might be Lord of both the dead and living. We shall all have to appear before the judgment seat of God. It is written, As surely as I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bend before me, and every tongue shall give praise to God. Every one of us will have to give an account of himself to God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please, everyone, rise. This is the will of my Father, says the Lord, that I should lose nothing of all that he has given to me, and that I should raise it up on the last day. The Lord be with you, and with your spirit. The reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Have faith in God and faith in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. Otherwise, how could I have told you that I was going to prepare a place for you? I am indeed going to prepare a place for you. And then I shall come back to take you with me, that where I am, you also may be. You know the way that leads where I go. Lord said Thomas, we do not know where we are going. How can we know the way? Jesus told him, I am the way, and the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. First of all, I would like to extend my deepest sympathy to the family and friends left behind by Salvador Salaver. I know it's quite disturbing already with what's happening in the world, and then, all of a sudden, something like this happened. You know, it's very difficult to understand why these things happen. We had a pandemic for almost a year now, and then we lost someone that we love. And within us, we're trying to search for answers. And the more we search for answers, the answers become more questions. And we were trying to find sense in what's happening in this. But if there's one thing that I would remind you, those answers, those questions will find its meaning if and only if 
we have our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Because death will never be understood by mere rational thinking, but rather it can be addressed by the faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. And that's one thing that I'd like you to remember this time. Yes, there is pain. Yes, there is separation. Yes, there is uncertainty. But all of this will be over one day. And if there is one thing that will remain, that is the love of God being showed upon you, given to you every day of your lives. Probably two or three days ago, I was just watching some uh, random videos in YouTube. And I'm, I'm very fond of history. And one suggestion there was about the sword of Gu Zhan. And Gu Zhan was like a historical figure in China. And so I was trying to uh, watch and watch and watch all the suggested videos. And it came to a point about uh, the art of war by Sun Tzu. And I remember that book because it's a required reading for us when we were in the seminary because it's part of the political, political uh, philosophy and, of course, some pastoral management and things like that. And then, furthermore, there's a suggestion, Seven Samurai by Akira Kurosawa. I remember the film because I watched it when I was 17. And I clicked on it and they explained the different themes and uh, things about it. Further on... It came to Star Wars. Star Wars? And the character of Luke Skywalker. And you might be probably asking, Father, you're in a funeral. Why are you discussing Sky Luke Skywalker and Star Wars? You know, but if there's one thing that's very essential in the character of Luke Skywalker, it's the concept of savior. The development of a character of a savior in a film, it's very much almost the same. And why am I saying this? Because the word Salvador in Spanish, it means Savior. Might be divided into two words, Salva, which means to save, and then Ador, you have the, the uh, tremendous feeling, the tremendous compassion to do the saving. Because we all know, if you want to save someone or something, you're putting your life at risk for you to protect that thing or that person. And if there's one thing that's very essential in that Savior development is that the Savior is not always right. The Savior will only realize his capacity to move out of himself and become selfless if and only if he was able to undergo the transformation. And part of the transformation is that realizing that as a savior, he has faults and limitation. And I do believe one way or another, Salvador has been a savior to each one of you. You might not be able to realize it. You might not be able to recognize it. But who knows? Sometimes you're sad, he made you happy. Sometimes you are lost, you're hungry, he fed you. Those little things that we seldom look over are actually the way he did to save you, to tell, to tell you how much he cared for you. He has fault, we know that. He's not a perfect person, we know that. But at one point, he might have been there for you to share his life and love to each one of you. And that's something that we should be grateful to the Lord. We met an imperfect, a perfect, imperfect person in our lives. And right now, everything seems to be cloudy. Everything seems to be broken. Everything seems to be dark. But if we go back to the gospel and reflect on it, it's the same situation. You are in the same situation that the apostles were before. When Thomas said, Lord, what are you talking about? We don't know where we're going. How can we know that we're able to follow you? But Jesus was able to think about it way ahead. And he said, don't worry. I have prepared something for you so that you will not be lost. But you have to believe that I am the way, the truth, and the life. And it is through me that you'll be able to go to the place I prepared for you.
And that's the reason we are here. We realized Salvador must have been a savior in our lives. But even the savior that we look up into needs our Lord and Savior. This is one thing that we should always remember. We can do so much of ourselves, but at the end of the day, we always have to believe in our Lord and our Savior. And this is the reason we are praying for Salvador, that our Lord and Savior will look with mercy upon him and let him in to the kingdom, to the place, to the home prepared for him by our Lord Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. And this is one thing that I'm going to leave to each one of you. Do not be despaired. Do not lose hope. Do not be discouraged in life. Continue to live, but with a deeper faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. Because the only person who could feel that emptiness being left behind by Salvador is our Lord Jesus Christ. And I was looking earlier when I come here, he's wearing the Barong Tagalog, which is like the uh, formal dress of a, uh, a Filipino back in the Philippines. And one thing that I realized, his home, his home where he was born, his home here in Canada, his home with our Lord Jesus Christ. We continue to pray for him. We continue to remember him. And whatever fault being committed by him, let us forgive. Move on, move forward, and have faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And now we would like to ask our funeral director, Jesse, to play for us the Ave Maria. And while the Ave Maria is playing, I would like you to reflect and remember those times that you shared with Salvador. Say a little prayer for him. And, and during the course of your reflection, if he will say something in your mind, let it be the last gift that he has for each one of you. Can we please play on the Ave Maria?
Please everyone rise. Let us pray. Father, God of all consolation, in your unending love and mercy for us, you turn the darkness of death into the dawn of new life. Show compassion to your people in their sorrow. Be our refuge and our strength to lift us from the darkness of this grief to the peace and light of your presence. Your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by dying for us, conquered death, and by rising again, restored life. May we then go forward eagerly to meet him, and after our life on earth be reunited with our brothers and sisters, wherever tear will be wiped away. And Lord, the generations rise and pass away before you. You are the strength of those who labor. You are the rest of the blessed dead. We rejoice in the company of your saints. We remember all of living faith, all who peacefully died, and especially those most dear to us who rest in you. Give us in time our portion with those who have trusted in you and have striven to do your holy will. To your name, with your church on earth and church in heaven, we ascribe all honor and glory now and forevermore. Amen. Please join me in the praying of the Our Father. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, as now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Salvador, may the angels lead you into paradise. May the martyrs come to welcome you and take you to the holy city, the new and eternal Jerusalem. May the choir of angels welcome you. Where Lazarus is for no longer, may you have eternal rest. Hear the words of Jesus. I am the resurrection and the life. The man who believes in me will live even if he dies. And every living person who puts his faith in me will never suffer eternal death. Saints of God, come to his aid. Come to meet him, angels of the Lord. Receive his soul and present him to God the Most High. May Christ call you, take you to himself. May angels lead you to Abraham's side. Ensure a certain hope of the resurrection to eternal life to our Lord Jesus Christ. We commend to Almighty God, our brother Salvador, and commit his body to its final resting place, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. Give him eternal rest, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon him, for you are merciful. Amen. The Lord be with you, with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless all, both the living and the dead. In the name of the Father, of the Son, of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. So, so we're already done with the prayers of the church. And of course, there are some people who would like to share the stories about Salvador. And I will call on them to please come forward and uh, give us the eulogy. First of the list is... Nani Luz.
Hello. I first met Salvador P. Salabar Jr. back in 1964 in the Philippines when we were classmates and we were partnered together for a folk dance competition. We lost touch for a long time, but he was the only he he was the one who came back into my life in 1972 and ended up becoming my husband in 1973. <clears throat> Salvador, or Tuto, his nickname from when he was younger was a loving, patient man, and he tried his best to be patient with me. He was a decent and responsible husband. He took care of me and my kids, Julius and Kathy. We started our family here in Canada, and we were very happy. We worked together to give our kids a better life. We had two, children, two kids together, my son Julius, who passed away in 2004 from cancer. He was married to my daughter-in-law, Janice. Janice loved my son, and I thank you, Janice, for loving my son in spite of his illness. I love you. And my daughter, Kathy, who took on the care of my husband, Salvador, a few years after he and I were separated. We had two grandchildren, Marisa, who finished her degree in architecture, and Tamiya, who is still currently in her last year of high school. Over the last couple of years, my daughter would ask me to help her by cooking some traditional Filipino dish Salvador was craving for, or some baked goods. I was happy to do this and to be able to help out. For you, Salvador, Tuto, you become part of me. I am blessed to have my daughter, Kathy, and my granddaughters, Marisa and Tamiya, and my daughter-in-law, Janice, and to have them with me here today. Salvador, I will always be a part of you. I love you always and forever. Rest in peace. Next, may we call on Janice to uh, do a eulogy as well. Salvador Salver, my tata. The first time I met the man who would become my tata, he was providing comfort and support at his son Julius's bedside. I could tell in that moment how dedicated and committed he was to being a father. Family was one of the most important aspects of his life. He always was putting his family, Kathy, Marissa, and Tamia at the forefront, making sure that they were happy and cared for for whatever they needed. Early on, Julius warned me that Tata was not a big talker, to not take it personally if he did not talk at length when we were together. In fact, if he spoke to you beyond the usual pleasantary greetings, this was a sign that he liked you. This could be deceiving because while quiet by nature, he would surprise you and become the center of attention at family gatherings and over our Sunday breakfast. Sometimes there was little room for others to get a word in. 
Playing board games was a regular occurrence at our family dinners, and he would be invited to play along with us, and he always responded that he was good and he would just watch. However, watching inevitably turned into participating either as a commentator or an MC. Who could forget the elaborate Christmas ornament he created after grumbling for weeks to Kathy about having to do this for our Christmas dinner gift exchange? Despite all that, everyone was in awe at the level of detail. It definitely was the ornament everyone else sought to get in the exchange. The look of pride and happiness on his face was priceless. Tata was a man who more often than not let his actions speak for him instead of words. He brought Kathy and I as his guests to the Terrell City Club Christmas dinners. He helped us to get a ride on the Jeepney when we were in the Philippines. And despite Tito Nelly's fears that we would end up kidnapped or something. He was always cooking food in celebration of us, his famous ribs, his vegetable spring rolls. And his biggest joy was just spending time together as a family and telling stories. Thank you, Tata, for giving me two of the most important gifts in my life. Julius, your son, my husband, Kathy, your daughter, my sister. I will never forget the first time you started saying, I used to have a son and a daughter, and now I have two daughters. Now I see you again beside Julius. I love to both of you. Thank you very much, Chinese. And last but not the least, we will call on Kathy. Oh, sorry, I need to take this off or else I won't be able to breathe. <laughs> uh, good afternoon to my family and friends joining us through this live viewing platform here all around the world and near at home. Thank you for taking the time to share with me and my family our memories, our thanks, and our final goodbye to my father, Salvador Salover. He was born in the Philippines on March 14, 1949 to his parents, Salvador Salaver uh, Sr. and Jimena Pabanco Salaver. He was one of eight children, Rodolfo, Nelly, Alex, Alvaro, Cora, Alberto, and Roberto. He took on the responsibility of taking care of his siblings when his own father passed away when he was young. My dad was barely in his 20s. He used to tell me and my brother so many stories of his hardship growing up poor and having to sometimes share one tin of food amongst his brothers and sisters, surviving on very little. But he never complained. He was just happy that he could provide for them. He especially liked telling these stories when me and my brother would complain about our own dinner and some other first world problems. My parents immigrated to Canada, pregnant with my brother in 1974, trying to build themselves a better life. Like Janice said, my father was a quiet man until he trusted you enough to let you in. But anyone who really knew him and really knew my father knew how funny he was. He was so full of laughter and he always had a corny joke or line that would make anyone laugh or smile. He did love going out for his coffees and for our breakfast on the weekends. And to this day, I still hear him telling me how I can't leave the house without putting something warm in my tummy. And I usually tell my girls that too. When we would order, he would point to the pictures on the menu of what he wanted. And then would always complain when it arrived that it didn't look the same as the picture. My father loved going to the horse races, and he instilled a love of watching these beautiful creatures to this day in me. 
He loved playing his kino and betting on his sports action wagers. He taught me the love of American football. I know, very weird. But since I could remember, I watched it with him and my brother every Sunday. He taught me how to work hard and instilled a very strong work ethic in me. And he led by example as he worked at his job at the Terminal City Club for 38 years until he retired. He was an incredible grandfather and Lolo to my two girls. I remember him making it possible for me to attend and finish my schooling after I had Marissa at a very young age. And he would come to help me often after Tamiya was born just to give me a short break in the mornings and all this after working his night shift. He would put his girls or my girls to sleep on his chest so that if he fell asleep himself, he would wake up to their movement. And he never once worried about holding or coddling them too much. And he would always tell me, Kathy, they won't be this young forever. And enjoy them while you can. These past two years were very hard. My father had so many ups and downs with his health, but he stayed strong and he chose to fight even near the end. But I know he wanted to be at peace and he is definitely in a better place. I just wanted to take the time to thank a few people because I wouldn't have been able to get through the last few weeks without them. My dad's family, Tita Nell, and everyone in the Philippines, Lawrence, Zaida, all your kind words, your generosity and your support means a lot. Uh, to Jamie and Maya, if you're watching, both of you for coming over and helping me grieve right after and do the things my heart couldn't bear to do. Uh, to my work, Tracy and Alana, thank you for allowing me the time to grieve and the space to heal. Marissa, to Mia, thank you for holding down the fort at home. It's been really hard the last couple of weeks, but you've done amazing. And um, I'm very proud of how strong you both are. Yeah. To my mother for sometimes giving me the necessary distractions I've needed in your own way. Jean and John, thank you for bringing Janice into this world and in turn into our lives. She has been the most incredible sister to me. You were there at the hospital at the very beginning. You were beside me when we said our goodbye and everything in between. And to Al and your family, you were there when I got the call that changed my life forever on February 14th that my dad was gone. You've allowed me to be this erratic hot mess. And all you do is love me, let me know it's okay, and that it'll get better. Thank you. And lastly, I wanna close with my sincere thanks to just a few individuals who gave me and Marissa and Tamiya these last two years with my dad. Dr. Dr. Bernard, Dr. Chin, Dr. Dehoney, and Dr. McDonald. If you're watching, I know it was a team-wide effort and there were a few more in the mix, but to these amazing people, you will always hold a special place in me and my family's hearts. Thank you everyone for attending my dad's service today. Goodbye, Daddy. We will always love you. Thank you, Kathy. This ends the service. Again, my deepest sympathy to each one of you who is grieving for the passing of Salvador. You'll be always in my prayer. I already said Mass for him uh, yesterday and then early this morning. Tomorrow, I will also say Mass for him and in the following days after. Again, my deepest sympathy to you. And we'll, may we call on our funeral director to assist us with the paying of the last respect.
Thank you, folks. That concludes the service.